I want to thank you all for coming in view of the uh, lousy weather and the fact that we're in competition with the opening ceremonies of the Olympics. And I think maybe we should get a life for better we should be here. Um, is Mark Boswell in the audience by chance? Mark, are you here? You didn't arrive. Okay, thank you. Um, Alan did a great job in presenting what I think we can consider now to be a working theory. Last year it was a hypothesis, and two years ago it was an idea. So we're, we're getting into the realm of uh, better scientific uh, support from a variety of uh, other uh, scientists, like geologists, geologists, uh, climatologists, and we're beginning to stimulate a lot of uh, support and, of course, uh, contentious objections from uh, other people. Uh, what the one problem we do have with uh, this particular scenario is that we don't have a crater. I have to stay away from uh, We don't have a crater, and that's not terribly unusual considering uh, the various impact scenarios I will present here in the next 25 minutes. Uh, back in 1980, um, the Alvarez team published their theory on uh, the demise of the dinosaurs by a very large impact that occurred over the Yucatan Peninsula. But at that time, uh, there was no credit, no evidence. They published the paper on the basis of iridium and other shock characteristics. Uh, for eight years, uh, the crater did not appear until one day it was discovered offshore, mostly uh, in the Yucatan uh, and some on the land. So at that point, it's pretty well proven that this huge event uh, was responsible for the um, demise of the dinosaurs, the 80% of the Earth's biota at that time. Uh, back 65 million years ago, this is the Yucatan Peninsula, the light blue indicates uh, areas that were underwater at that time. And in 65 million years, things have happened. For example, India is down here in the Indian Ocean. It had not slammed up yet into the Himalayan plate. So over 65 million years, these areas gradually dried out. This is on the uh, east side of the uh, Rocky Mountains, which at that time was uh, a, a shallow uh, lake or inland sea. And the impact um, in the Yucatan Peninsula was underwater. This is uh, an impact by an asteroid into that water, probably eight to ten kilometers in, in diameter, uh, triggering this huge, huge impact. Um, to give you a scale. This is uh, what it looks like. You take all the water and the land away. Uh, this is Florida over here to give you a little scale of what 180 kilometers, uh, 200 kilometers roughly, uh, the diameter of the crater at that time. It has since been mostly eroded, and of course most of it is underwater. You'll have to forgive me in some of these because Alan was He's a perfect uh, artist and, and graphic artist. He, he was the one who put all these PowerPoints together. So uh, mainly these are his, uh, uh, shall we say, uh, uh, art uh, illustrations. Anyhow, if we look at the KT impact, uh, we have a 10 diameter, uh, 10 kilometer diameter crater, our uh, object that has a mass of one, uh, one point, whoops, and get used to this, people. Stay, stay with me here. There we go. 1.32 trillion ton uh, object, uh, density about two and a half, and a speed of uh, 20 kilometers per second if it was an asteroid. If it were um, a comet, its velocity might be somewhere between 40 and 60 kilometers per second. But for uh, purposes of calculation, people have settled on on 20. The mass is huge, as you can see. The kinetic energy 
of this object as it struck the Earth uh, was six times 10 to the eight megatons, and a megaton is one million <coughs> tons of dynamite. And this is three orders of magnitude more than all the Earth's nuclear arsenal that's ever been exploded, we have it now, destroyed, whatever. There's a huge amount of energy. And I might point out that this is not the largest impact uh, to happen to the Earth. Uh, this is a recent event, 65 million years ago. There are very much larger <laughs> impact scars from 2 billion years ago. In fact, there's probably something like 180 visible remains of impacts over the last uh, two billion years. Most of them were eroded, covered with mud water, and uh, ultimately destroyed. Uh, this crater uh, is 150 kilometers in diameter, and on the uh, impact, the, the ejection, there was a lot of material lofted into the atmosphere. Uh, it went into the atmosphere, through the atmosphere, uh, very hot, melted, uh, molten, uh, silicates, uh, carbonates, a lot of vapor went through the atmosphere, made a big hole, and then it came back down to the atmosphere and uh, reheated again. And as it fell to the ground, it started fires, but I'm getting ahead of myself. Uh, in addition to uh, ejection, uh, ejection a lot of, ejecting a lot of material, uh, it also pushed the water out as the impact and the explosion was happening. And this crater, by the way, was made within about six to eight seconds. The whole thing was very rapid. Uh, that water came crushing back in uh, into the central uh, impact pit, which it, it had been uh, vaporized into one hell of a lot of steam. Um, so we have hot ejecta out in the atmosphere, reheating on the way in, heating the atmosphere itself, and setting fires to uh, at least the northern hemisphere. This includes Russia, Europe, uh, Siberia, uh, northern, uh, everything above the equator, some below the equator, but this is, they call it global, it's mainly a northern hemisphere phenomenon. In, a, in addition to the fires, it put a lot of soot, uh, ash, uh, and other noxious materials into the atmosphere. CO2, which we talk about now, but increased at least 10 to 20 fold, but it wasn't one of the major killers of, of life and wasn't one of the major changes. It mainly emanated from the, all the global fires that uh, were created. Now, there are other ways of killing you off. Uh, we have acid rain developing from the interaction of uh, the nitrous oxides in the atmosphere, uh, making nitric acid, and then the thermal decomposition of the target rock gypsum, which is calcium sulfate, and that made a lot of sulfuric acid. So if you didn't burn the trees, you uh, shortly killed them by uh, having a little too much acid for them. Uh, lethal to plants, it lowered the ocean pH, made it very inhospitable to uh, many of the marine animals, especially plankton, uh, the foraminifera. It uh, killed the organism that walks up the CO2 and got to that uh, replenishing uh, in that engine of CO2 to oxygen, wiped out, disrupted the food chain, and lost the final uh, photosynthesis engines, uh, both land and sea. So you can see that uh, this was not a very nice place to be after the impact. If you were fortunate enough to be far enough away from the impact, not to be incinerated. The, uh, in addition, there was a destruction of the ozone layer, uh, which allowed the more UV radiation to reach the surface, and which is another lethal uh, element in destroying uh, land and some sea animals. The atmosphere uh, heated up, very hot, and then it cooled down. And if all that didn't get you, there are these huge tsunamis. Now, just to get an illustration, the, uh, whoops, excuse me, the, uh, if you were 300 uh, kilometers away from the impact of a 10 kilometer uh, diameter impactor, uh, 